What up, guys? Your boy Quake. We're back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 144. Man, them numbers getting up. Everybody knows your boy Vito. We back. Yeah, yeah uh, we did the PlayStation 5 giveaway, like I said. Uh, we're having kind of some technical difficulties. Mm-hmm. So everybody that won the cash prizes, I've pretty much sent out everything besides one person. I've sent out all the cash prizes that people won. For the PlayStation 5s, so far as of the recording right now, yeah. the digital version hasn't, the person hasn't responded to the digital version. Ooh. So it could, he has one week, like I said. So by Monday, if there is no official response, then the digital version is up for grabs again. You got one whole week, like I said before. If you don't respond, that's on you. And then for the disc version, the person's location is way out of here. Yeah, it's some difficulty. We can't ensure the PlayStation 5 going over there. So we might have to redo this whole thing. If the person at the digital doesn't claim it, we're going to have to redo the whole thing. So the people, it's funny, is the cash prizes got claimed immediately. <laughs> The cash prizes got claimed immediately, but the PlayStation 5s have not been claimed. Well, one person claimed it, but the location is too remote for us to even send it over there. So, if this goes like this, the person doesn't claim the digital version, and there's the disc version we can't obviously send. So, we're going to do it Patreon only for the PlayStation 5s if they are not claimed. The reason why is because I've been wanting to give away more on Patreon. And we already tried the regular way. So I want to do it on Patreon only. And that way it's it's less cluttered with people too because there's so many names as well. Yeah, that's true. Man. It was hard to kind of get through a lot of it. And uh, I noticed some people tried to enter in two times. And I had to cut them out with IP because it shows what it does. I know you can switch your IP address so people can cheat that system too. But mm-hmm. it shows your IP address. It shows the name. shows the email. A lot of people tried to enter in twice, which... I should have eliminated them completely, but I let them still be in there for the entries that they did originally. Um, so I might just do Patreon only. I don't know. I haven't decided 100%. So if that digital version of PlayStation 5 doesn't get claimed, I will have a digital PlayStation 5 to give away still. And then if the disc version, which I don't think we can send it over there, from right now it's looking like 90% chance we can't send it over there due to insurance. I can't even Correct. policy insure it anything. So then two PlayStation fives are back up available and then we're going to do it patreon only and then whoever wins out of those wins so if they don't claim yeah patreon. so they still nah there's no way i at know that point. Yeah, okay. yeah but if they don't this is what i mean is a lot of people the people i'm not saying these people aren't real fans or anything but a lot of people didn't pay attention and didn't even enter when we went live they're like what this place how do we live? enter here? yeah like so i mean to the people that pay attention more you're obviously going to get rewarded a lot more because you're the one that's given a lot more support which we appreciate so I will figure it out. I might do I might do digital version just for everybody and then Patreon only for disc. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But right. yeah, we still got a couple of days left. So, you know, who knows? That person can claim the digital and then all we got is the disc version. So okay. yeah, we'll Sweet. keep we'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh let's get into the news. Uh the judge has officially denied Gunna's bond. So let's go over the article and this is kind of crazy. There's a court hearing that that they, oh, really? they show mm-hmm. and the and lawyers getting the guys, the guys, pardon my language, got his dick hard off this shit. <laughs> he God, he loved it. He was like, man, we got lyrics on him. This and the judge, everything, the jury, yeah. all that. So he was like, he was happy as fuck. You can hear he's like, oh, this is exciting to read. He got his rocks off on that. So let me go over the article course, first. Uh, Gunnel will remain behind bars, at least for the foreseeable future. According to the reporter, Joel Wicker, a Fulton County judge denied Gunna born Sergio Kitchens bonds bond on Monday, May 23rd, and set his trial for January 2023. Now, when this first happened, I thought Gunna wasn't really part of this much because if you look at the charges, it was a lot less than Young Thug, but they're they're saying he is also one of the leaders, one of the big people that are, you know, part of this gang too. So this YSL legend, yeah. They said he has a command role, meaning like he's up there as a commander yeah. in this. They're treating it like a whole yeah, sergeant man. military That's type crazy, of crazy yeah uh chief so, commander like yeah she tweeted i was just in court where a judge denied bond for gunna and set his trial date for january 9th 2023 so he's he's locked up for at least eight more months or six more or seven more months whatever you want to count yeah. the prosecutors allege why is a gang not just a record label they also allege gunna serves in a command role so 
Uh, let's let's just let me play the video for you guys. Wow, so they're stuck this whole year. Can't do shit. No, Thug, which I'm gonna be talking about right now, he actually they're gonna try to get him bond early. So we'll see if they approve his. But if they don't approve, there's gonna, no way. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see. I mean, who knows? Yeah. They might find a way to, you know, convince the judge in some way. So what's crazy is there's a Breakfast Club interview with Young Thug, way before this happened. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he he actually kind of like expects expected this to happen. Yeah. He was like, I've done so much bad in my life previously yeah. that it's gonna catch up to me eventually. Yep. And you just gotta go with it and just deal with yeah. whatever happened. So yeah, that's interesting that you said that. Um, let's let me, let me find the video of the judge, or not the judge, but the the prosecutor literally reading the lyrics off to the judge. And the way he says it, he just he he loved he loved what happened to uh to Gunna. Yeah, it seems like Thug was expecting this to happen, but he just didn't know when. Based off that Breakfast Club interview. Yeah, I mean, if you do wrong, yeah. I mean, you shouldn't. Even Gucci, Gucci, when he got locked up, he's like, man, yeah. all this stuff was meant to it was supposed to happen. Because yeah, it's basically karma coming back at you. Yeah, I mean, that's you know? really, really what it is. Let's let me play it quick. Why isn't this playing? Come on. Hate when this Bluetooth thing does not connect the right way. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I hate when this happens. Why does this thing not connect the way it's supposed to connect? It says connected. Okay, now I can hear. Okay. Videos basically stating that uh, they have 10 hundred round choppers talking about weapons, talking about messing with them, you're going to die. Um, they have a, I, I actually enjoyed this one. Uh, it was a video released on or about 12, 18, 20, where uh, they said, just screw it. Uh, take it to trial. I believe they even have a choice word in that one for the judge. He videos basically stating that. Yeah, so he said, I know, we were talking, so I didn't even get a chance to hear. Round so basically, he was uh, he was happy as hell that. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this one. Yeah, I enjoy. Yeah, that's what he said. He he Jeez. really he really got a hard off on uh, reading those lyrics. I mean, yeah, you you rap stuff like "fuck the judge," <laughs> "take it to trial," like all these yeah, bars. No, it's like you're no. like you're basically just throwing. That's up not looking thing. good at the court <laughs> either. Yeah, it's definitely Shit. not a good look. So yeah, they really fucked themselves over. <laughs> with those lyrics. I mean, it's yeah. themselves. Nobody, nobody's putting a gun to these guys' head and saying, oh, rap no, these bars. Not. They're doing yeah. it themselves, man. Yeah. You can't really feel bad for somebody that's doing something to themselves, you know? Some and of the days spoken to exist. Yeah, so now for Young Thug, in terms of, uh, they're trying to get a bond hearing, meaning they're trying to convince the judge that, to get a bond for Young Thug. Let's go over the article. Uh, on Monday, May 23rd, Gunna was back in court where he got sentenced and then asked for Young Thug. He'll also remain behind bars for the foreseeable future. According to WSB TV reporter Michael Sheedon, attorneys for Young Thug will make their arguments for bond on June 2nd. So that's about a week and a half. Uh, at the same time, prosecutors have filed a motion to have Thug's attorney, Brian Steele, removed from the case, citing a conflict of interest. Judge Glanville, however, didn't go into specific details. So his is going to be a bond hearing, meaning they're going to present a case as to why Young Thug should have a bond. And that's going to be on June 2nd. So who knows if he gets approved for his bond. If he does, then he gets placed bond, gets out, probably on house arrest. And, you know, he'll just have to wait out whatever happens. And then, you know. Um, what, if just, he, what if he gets bond and just starts running away? Goes, like, to Mexico and then goes, like, crazy shit I was, happens. Yeah, I was talking to somebody on Twitter about this. I was like, y Lil Dirk should do that. Because Lil Dirk's next. Lil well, Dirk's te next. Technically, they can, if you, like, let's just say... Cryptocurrency, untrackable. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like <laughs> even if he goes to Mexico, the United States can contact Mexico and be like, we're looking for this person. Not Mexico. I'll go somewhere completely. Worse. Yeah, like I would just go and freaking, I don't know, some. You know that China, that the tunnel that they found, the under, underground tunnel with that? that I, mean, was, would I would go straight there in the high grass. Nobody really I would just go to a weird island where you, you know you can kind of live and I just mean, yeah, like you got money. find the most. Yeah, yeah, you got money. So like just go somewhere where there's just like. Yeah, really, but that's easier said than done. No, no I'm saying we're, we're like somewhere you can go where there's like 200 mile radius or four or 500. There's just no like people. 
Like I know houses. it's 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 Fuck fine it's fine there. to do that until but you go man until somebody crates you some it's fine to do that but what about your family your kids all that you, you can't just you, no, you no, can't no. just move all of them <laughs> they're not gonna always be like yeah, when you got money like that you can no nah, but they, they, they would want to do that that's the thing <laughs> they want to do that that's the thing so it's it's you hey, know it's harder it's, it's like some Breaking Bad shit where Walter White changes his whole identity I mean would you want to be stuck in prison if you got thirty years or something like that or do that shit I would take that I mean both are tough one you're not near. Both of them, you're not near your family. Period. Both I'm, of them are going to be. I'm saying, like, if, be, if he, I'm sure he can get his family. Like, little Dirk is just, you know, two kids and a wife. Oh, he doesn't have two kids. He's got like. Oh, he's got more. He's got like five, I think. Oh wow, like that five yeah. kids, and he has ex baby mamas. He has family members, and then I mean, he can't take wife. everybody. But I'm, I'm just saying. saying that's that's my point. Is you're gonna close close to people. regardless with prison, and moving away and changing your identity. You're gonna be away from your family, both points because the family. The whole family can't change their identity, and everybody moves and Correct. turns into somebody totally different. This is not Cuba, where Tupac, Michael Jackson, and everybody's chilling on one island in Cuba. Because every, every oh, time, shit, everybody, somebody, every time somebody dies, they went to Cuba and they're hiding there. Yeah, they're why the does same that island. happen? Yeah, if that's the case, I want to go to Cuba. Two time, what's up, man? It, no, some, <laughs> someone said uh, the reason why America can't go to Cuba is because of that. Because you know, Cuba, the border, yeah. you can't go to Cuba as American, as like a U.S. citizen, you can't go to Cuba. So people are like. That's why it's because Michael Jackson living there and Tupac and Biggie, they're all enjoying life. Two, Nipsey Hussle's there, Pop Smoke, everybody. Everybody that died is in Cuba right now. Shit. So, all right. I don't know. That It's tough either way. It's not like you saw Breaking Bad where Walter White, you know, at the end mm. has to change. And he's like thinking, he's like, come on, he's trying to convince his wife. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Start a new life. I got millions. They're like, no, yeah. I'll let you know. I don't want to bleed. But it's, it's tougher. You know, it's a tough it situation. It is tough, but. I, I, I personally I would be like, listen, man, Fuck it. y'all got like, I'm going to leave y'all like $3 million or $5 million or whatever. I'm out. It is nice. <laughs> sorry. No no more daddy. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't got a dad no more. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think $3 million. It, I mean, as a father, what what is your oper- what is your, what is your uh, purpose as a father? Let's, let's all break, break everything away. Your purpose as a father is to make sure you raise your kids so they're 18 and they can handle themselves. That three million to five million dollars will be more than enough to make sure that by the time they become eighteen, they're more than financially stable and they can take care of themselves. That's what I'm saying. He could have the option to do that, like you're saying, like that. <laughs> Give him ten million dollars in tens. That's a lot of money, you know. And if they, he he could go to Cuba, for example, like say random island where yeah. Michael Jackson is and Nipsey Hussle, whatever. Yeah. Go there, try to get a new identity, hide, try to get a new identity. You know, people create all these type of things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they create all these <laughs> passports and all that. Yeah. <laughs> the janitor is cleaning up. Yeah, you know. the janitor is cleaning uh, like, up. We're talking like about Cuba and, and all this <laughs> shit. Uh, shit He's probably what, like, what the hell? Is yeah, what are these guys talking about? Anyway. Yeah. So if you do that, ch- try to change his identity. <laughs> go away for a long time. Change his identity. Stop laughing. <laughs> Why am I laughing? I'm about to quit. No, it's just bad. It's bad timing. It's funny. It's just like yeah. We're talking about Cuba and he comes. And, um. You know, just try to be away from, like, 10 years so everybody just forgets that you're even... Yeah. Try to change your... Even, like, the way you look, man, a I little bit. Pop, yeah. That's I not impossible. I've seen it happen. Yeah, you I know? mean, I don't know. That's that's yeah, tough, I'm man. Just, Either way. You know, or <laughs> get <laughs> locked up for 30 years in jail. and Yeah, these people, honestly, if you, if you know this is coming... get stabbed and... <laughs> if, you, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> if you know this is coming, I'll leave, bro. That's what it is. I'm running. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of places I can go and enjoy my life. Um, it sucks. You have to leave certain people, but you give them enough money, they'll be able to survive and they'll be good. So, uh, here's, here's another, um, kind of Rico indictment. And this is huge. A Bronx drill rapper by the name of D thing, GZ D thing. This is not Lil Dirk's brother who passed away. D thing. This is a Bronx drill rapper, uh, D mm-hmm. thing, GZ and 33 others are indicted on a 65 count attempted murder, animal cruelty and more. My goodness. What the hell is wrong with these people? See, uh, in today's time, like I said, you can't get away with anything. Police are one million percent. Tony Yeo believes that uh, it was because of G Unit the hip hop police were made, which I don't. I think hip hop police were around when, like, after the Tupac and Biggie thing. That's when hip hop police were formed as a task force. That's a legit task force, by the way. It's called hip hop police. Yeah, I think during that time, what Yeo was talking about is like when it got like real serious and legit. Like, all right, this is actual team, you know. Yeah, we gotta yeah, get yeah. serious yeah. with this and blah blah blah. Because you know when they took down Ja Rule and Murder Inc. and all that, the FBI. Yeah. That was that was an FBI conspiracy. They thought Supreme was trying to funnel, was basically extorting them and using the money to funnel drugs and build an empire again. 
Mm. Uh, and Supreme was huge in the streets, obviously. And so that's why they took him. But they, Irv, Irv, Chris Gotti, Ja Rule, they all stood their ground, paid hundreds of millions of dollars. It was a lot of money that they paid. I think he said they sp- ended up in paperwork $12 million. Yeah. He, paperwork, like that. just was, lawyers and stuff. So um, they beat it because they didn't do anything wrong. But these these other, these new artists, I don't, there's n- they have so much evidence against now because of social media yeah. that most of them aren't going to beat it. Not like back then. Back then, at least you could, you know, that was 2004, 2005, no social media. You had only Facebook and you had, what, MySpace, if that, um, nothing yeah. really social media like that. You don't right. have like right now everything you can record. You don't have phones with cameras with 4K cameras. Yeah, Back then, you barely had 180. Yeah, you had hours. a razor. Yeah, barely 240p. Uh, One quality. megapixel. So, uh, let's go over the article. Bronx Bronx District Attorney Darcel Clark and New York Police Department Commissioner Kichant Swell Swell issued a 65 count indictment over several recent shootings around the River Park Towers complex on Tuesday, May 24th leading to the arrest of multiple local drill rappers, including D. Thang GZ. According to ABC7, 34 alleged members of the Bloods affiliated RPT organization have been charged with conspiracy to commit murder, an attempted murder, attempted assault, and animal cruelty, and criminal possession of weapon, among things. Seven of the defendants were hit in a, with attempted murder and other charges for an incident in August 2020, in which they allegedly fired approximately 11 shots into a building uh, vestibule, narrowly missing the target's head. Damn. Eight months later, members of the RPT organization and their allies allegedly committed a gang assault on a member of the Crips at Rikers Island. The animal cruelty comes after authorities say members of the game live-streamed a pigeon that flew into their neighborhood, likening it to a Crip that wandered to the wrong side of the town. They ultimately beat the pigeon to death with a cane on Facebook Live. So they basically treated the pigeon like it was a crip and said, look, there's a crip in our neighborhood and just beat a pigeon, an innocent pigeon. If Mike Tyson saw that, he would have beat the shit out of him. Oh, Mike yeah. Tyson loves pigeons, so uh, yeah, that would have I mean, been an innocent. Pigeons are beautiful. Man. Yeah, so usually when people harm animals, they're pretty crazy people. They're people that like are capable of murdering humans. Cause, yes. Because I don't I know. Yeah, I've never seen a normal person just want to kill an animal for no reason. Correct. Um, these defendants allegedly engaged in gun violence, committing six shootings, one which injured a rival gang member, Clark said. They alleged, allegedly fired wildly on the streets without regard for the lives of anyone else. They allegedly possessed a gun used in shootings that they poised, that they posed with on social media and rapped about the violence. I thank the NYPD for their partnership in this investigation. Uh, we are doing all we can to battle the gun surge, but more must be done to deviate young people from a life of gangs and senseless violence. I'm calling on rappers from the Bronx to stop using music to encourage shootings and use it to better the community. I'm asking to have a summit with aspiring rappers and rap stars who come from the Bronx, record companies, radio stations, and social media so we can find solutions to pre- prevent further violence. That's not going to prevent further violence. You talking, telling people, hey, do not rap about this stuff is not going to do anything. Right. For problems, what do we have to do for problems? We have to attack the root of a problem. The root of a problem is where you stop things. You you know, if you want to destroy, let's just say a Rico, whatever, they got young thug, you get the snake, you get the, the head of everything, the root of the problem. The root of the problem is poverty in these communities. That's the root of the problem. That's not has nothing to do with music. That's that's a product of of the environment. That's always been that. It's a product of the environment. It's not what did rap how did rap start out? It started out as a rebellious music over racist uh governments, racism, all that stuff. It started out as a rebellion of that. That's how hip hop even started originally. And it just transferred now to more aggressive violence, but it's not it's not violence that's rooted and just because they're rich they started killing each other no this started way before they've been poor what does poverty breed it breeds violence because everyone wants to get food on their table right. everyone wants money to survive that's where this started so these i hate when these prosecutors and these political people are like oh it's the hip-hop music it's it's they're the ones that are causing these problems oh, it started with poverty, man. Poverty. Yeah. You know, you guys are, Bro- I think the Bronx or Brooklyn or one of those is one of the, the poorest boroughs in New York. Mm-hmm. 
So what does that fix these fix all these other minimum wage is ridiculously low yeah. in a lot of these areas. Um, the opportunities have been sucked out, especially if it's a predominantly black and Latina culture. The opportunities of jobs have been sucked out insanely of these communities. All kinds of stuff like that. So when you, when you take away 90, 30 million opportunities, what are they going to do? Correct. Just resort to illegal things. You can't do anything else. You can't get a regular job. You can't yeah. do these things. I Just a good, good example in our country, man. L- like, what is it, like 60% or some shit, like crazy numbers, like unemployed, no jobs, exactly. or nothing. Why do you think so many people get into drugs yep. and selling them? Yep. That's the only way they can make money. Yeah. That's the only way. That's the easiest way. Why do you think they cheat people? And, you know, for a taxi cab from the airport to your house, it's a two two arrows. Yeah. And they charge, you know, they ch- people come from the United States. Oh, but they got money. Let's charge them more. That's surplus. Why? Because they're not making shit with two euros. What the fuck mm-hmm. are you going to do? Actually, it's, it's even less than that probably. I can't remember. But it's these l- communities and countries where there's so much poverty and there's no access to like you know jobs and things like that it's where they they really don't have no choice because they gotta get make something get something you know so they start doing you know it's a, there's a lot of good people that do fucked up shit yeah illegal right. shit just to you know to get somewhere like when i was in mexico you know it's just it is what it is when i was in mexico and cabo i actually had a conversation with one of the guys trying to sell me cocaine i just i was he was right next to me he was trying to like i told you guys before on the podcast uh when i went to cabo mexico i got like the second I went downtown, like, 11 times, people asked me cocaine. One of them, I just talked to them. I was just having a conversation. Very, very nice guy, man. Just came from shitty poor. He's like, man, the only reason I'm selling this is because I got nothing. He was like, if I get some type of money, he's like, do you think I want to sell this? Blah, blah, blah. If I go get a job, I'm getting so low amount of pesos that it's it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. You know, so. And he's the like, money's tr- big, the reward. So that that's, that's really what it is. 90% of people here are not bad people. They're just. You grow up in a shitty environment. What do you have to resort to when you don't have any opportunities? Instead of, hey, let's stop the music. No, music is just a product of what's happening. So you guys need to go into these communities, open up business, invest, not give the NYPD billions and billions and billions more. They're getting brand new Teslas. They're getting all this shit, more money to fund guns and all this stuff. It's like you guys are funding the wrong shit. But, of course, you know, a lot of this shit – it, you know, these politicians don't care, man. Look at this shooting yeah. that happened with these yeah. kids. These politicians. Yeah, man. Shut look, up, look, Yeah, look look what these politicians are tweeting. We Our condolences to the family. We're so deeply saddened. But then, you know what one, one person did? They quoted the tweet, mm-hmm. and they put the numbers of how much money they're getting from the National Rifle Association, which is the gun. Yeah. Mitt Romney got like $13 million. So why the fuck? You it's, don't think he a gives scam. a scam. He just, doesn't give a fuck about these kids, man. No, he could care yeah. less. As long as it's not it's, a, affecting his family. Yeah. When the purge, when a purge, something like purge happens, mm-hmm. and these rich people it affects them, then it's like, oh, shit. We got to, yeah. whenever it affects them, they move the, the law, the, they pass the law immediately. Yeah. It goes immediately. If yeah. it affects them in any way, watch yeah. crypto, they're going to move quick on it. We don't want these poor people getting any way rich, any, any type of way they're getting money. We're going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what this all, I, I hate it to go to that more of a politics. It's a scam, political. man. It's just, it's. Make sure their pockets are good at the end of the day, man. That's all it is. Yeah. So a lot of these politicians don't give a fuck about people. I mean, there's some good, uh, decent ones, but of course, um, for the most part, like 95% are sad, hurt. man. That has to be that way, man. It's really messed up. A lot of people die for suffering s- for nothing. For nothing. Kids, man. Kids. And prayers to all those families over yeah. there, man, suffering from this situation. Yeah, these are kids, man. The photos of the kids is very sad. So Unbelievable. Um, Jay-Z. So Jay Z does like these clubhouse interviews with Elliot Wilson. Shout out to Elliot Wilson, yeah. at least. Um, and because of Biggie's birthday, whatever, um, he did like a quick interview because you know Jay Z hung out with Biggie quite a few times. He was cool with him um, before he passed away, obviously. And in this clubhouse interview, he talks about the first time he heard Biggie's "Who Shot You," which is a diss track towards Tupac. So. Yeah. Let me f- find the clip and play it. And it's very interesting. Because Jay-Z, whenever he speaks on legendary things like this, most people listen. Facts. He, the Who Shot Your CD, he called me like it was like we had some kind of beef or something. He's like, yo, meet me on 125th right now. <laughs> oh, Kareem, Biggs Bird. I jumped in my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Biggs Bird, yeah. yeah. I jump in my car, you know, I'm, I'm heavy. 
Like, what's going on? Like, with Biggs, I, I mean, I fly up there. He, he, you know, I get out my car, get in his car. He plays the song. Be like, yeah, here, you keep the, um, the, uh, it was a cassette tape, actually. He's like, yeah, you keep that. <laughs> I wrote, like, four songs that night. None of them was good as who shot you was. Like, I wrote, like, four songs. Just, but they were just... Again, it was that, you know, this friendly competition, like just trying to push each other to be the best. Biggs gave me the Who Shot Your CD. Yeah, so he wow. said he said a few times that a lot of that Biggie Who Shot Your record motivated him to become a better rapper. Because when he first heard it, he was like, wow. And then he said that night, I recorded four songs, but there were nothing as good as Who Shot You. Yeah. So, um, yeah, dope story, man. Obviously, Jay-Z's been around for so long. I'm sure he's gotten millions of stories. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, Got a lot of stuff that he hasn't told us, probably. Still, yeah, I think I think a lot of these artists should do like documentaries and just kind of reveal stories of stuff that they've been through. And yeah, um, or I just would, when they get interviewed, people I need to ask them. But they don't really a lot of like Jay Z now stop doing interviews. Really, yeah, that's um, true. Because yeah, they don't they, they don't really like a lot of these interviewers. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of them try to manipulate the interview or do something. It's like Correct. they don't just have a regular conversation. That's why he, he trusts Elliot Wilson. Elliot Wilson actually works with Title. Chief uh, executive at Title, so of course, um, yeah, that's why he did. He even went on Clubhouse with Elliot because he doesn't do shit like that. For I, I kind of miss those cassette days yeah. recording. Yeah, Kanye that's West. Kanye's always Kanye's been kind some. of quiet, but there's that song, yeah. uh, "X X X Tentacion's documentary is coming out. By the time this uh, a podcast airs, it's going to be already out on Hulu, and the song that Kanye and X made. Well, this is after X passed away, obviously. Um, the song uh, True Love, that's finally going to be released on streaming platforms. So finally, that's probably my favorite song I've done to two. Okay. So finally, we get it completed on streaming platforms and not on a stem player. So shout out to Kanye for releasing that and putting it on the X documentary. Good. Kanye's doing something else, though. He's redesigning McDonald's packaging. Wow. This guy's got so much influence in designing things now. It's like, Jeez, whatever he wants to do, he's like, ah, we'll, we'll take Kanye. Whatever he yeah, wants to do. <laughs> That's so, good, man. I'm proud of him. He's become just. I mean, he's always been, he's always been like artistic, you know, even yeah. on the graduation cover, he worked with a lot of, uh, uh, one of the top Japanese. Uh, yeah. He, it was crazy. You I forget the names. Props for that, man. Yeah. So, Ye has teamed up uh, with the legendary Muji industrial designer, uh, Nate Nato. Fukosawa to reimagine McDonald's packaging. He captioned the post ending his social media hiatus. So the box, it looks like just a square burger, actual. But like, it's not the burger, it's like a box for the burger. Interesting. Yeah, it looks kind of funny. Yeah, I don't know. I got to see that in person, but I'm not eating McDonald's anytime soon. So yeah. <laughs> I'm the, I don't really care to see it. I'm not much of a McDonald's fan, anyways. But right. But the fries busting. Ah, sometimes. Sometimes. Depends. So shout out to Kanye, man. Uh, yeah. Out here, uh, he McGee's. did that Greg, uh, McDonald's commercial. So that was pretty funny. Can I get a for a while? That's so. funny that Pusha this and then now they're yeah Kanye. <laughs> Kanye's work. <laughs> you know, it's like that is yeah. I forgot all about that. Yeah, kind of. Funny he made the Arby's commercial. That the Arby's yeah. is, which is hilarious. I mean, like I said, Pusha doesn't give a fuck. Like he he knows Kanye and Drake became friends. He doesn't get involved in all that. At the so, end of the day, it's business, so. Yeah, exactly. Queso. So if you don't know who Queso is, he is a Jacksonville rapper who was very close and is basically allegedly the shooter, one of one of Young and Ace's shooters. Because Young, really? Young and Ace moves heavy, and I really like Young and Ace's music. <clears throat> one of the bars he actually spit was, Free Queso, I hope we beat a murder case off the, I think, Odd Boys. So. He spoke about Queso quite a few times. This is interesting. It got everybody responding to it. Like, a lot of people in the music industry, rappers, responding to it. Because right. I've never seen anything like this. And a lot of rappers said this happens. But now we actually got to see it in person. And it's actually happening. Well, we'll Queso, uh, father, will testify against his own son in the Myrtle trial. Meaning Jeez. he's snitching on his own son. His father is going to be snitching on his own son in the murder trial. Wow. Think about that. That is. Think about that. You're tough. locked up with your dad, and your dad flips on you and snitches on you. How does, how does that feel? Oh, my God. I, I don't know what to say. 
That's kind of... Yeah, a lot of people react to Fat Joe, 50, a bunch of people react to it. We're like, what the... F- I've never seen anything like this. And this... We'll, you'll, you'll hear later a little bit in this podcast, Fat Joe talking about 6 9 and snitching and stuff. And he says this in the interview. And this is before this even came out. This interview was done... The Fat Joe interview was done before this news came out. So Fat Joe knows about this. Obviously, when you're, when you're in the streets, you kind of expect yeah, things yeah, like yeah. this. So let's go over the article. Uh, the fa- father of viral rapper Queso will reportedly testify against his son in his upcoming first-degree murder trial. As reported by First Coast News, Abdul Robinson Sr. agreed to cooperate with prosecutors after both of his sons were charged in 2020. Hakeem Robinson, better known as Jacksonville rapper Queso, is charged with first-degree murder, while his brother Abdul Robinson Jr. is charged with second-degree murder. Robinson Sr. is charged as an accessory after the fact to first-degree murder along with three others. Police and prosecutors allege the patriarch of the family is the leader of a violent drug gang known as ATK, which is Young and Ace's crew, Ace Top Killers. Queso, who helped popularize the murder rap genre, is believed to be a member. Queso stands accused of killing two rival Jacksonville rappers. Charles McCormick, also known as Lil Buck, killed in January 2020. And Adrian, Adrian Gaynor, also known as Bibby, killed in February 2019. Uh, Robin, Robinson Sr., which is the father, is facing three felony charges that could amount to 90 years in prison. Although his cooperation with prosecutors may reduce that, one of the six defendants in McCormick's murder, Dominique Burner, also agreed to cooperate with investigators. He said Queso's issues with McCormick started after the dissent talked disparagingly about the rapper Willie Addison. Addison, also known as Boss Goon, was murdered in January 2019 after a show at Paradise Gentlemen's Club. He happened to be Queso's half-brother. Before Queso's arrest, he made videos with Young and Ace, who was allegedly also affiliated with ATK. Ace's 21 single, Who I Smoke, A Thousand Miles Remix, was an internet hit and listed the names of several Jacksonville murder victims, including Bibby. So his father's getting 90 years. And if he snitches on his two kids... It might be reduced. But he's not going to be free. It's going to be reduced a lot. I see Wow. And another person snitching on there, too. It's not just him. Mm-hmm. That's what I, This is what I mean. When you get in Rico charges, Young Thug, there's going to be people snitching. There's going to be at least... Yeah, because nobody you get, wants... You, yeah, you get 30, 30 people, at least five of them are going to snitch. Yeah, if you're getting slapped with 90 years, bro, <laughs> like... I, I'm telling. I don't give a fuck. I'm telling. And then after that, I'm moving. I'm going, somewhere, I'm going somewhere completely different. Nobody can kill me, and I'm good. I'm telling. Yeah, because... Uh, the guy has to ruin his life, man. Nobody wants to ruin their life for 90 years. <laughs> that means you're going to die. You're literally going to die in prison. That's it. It's done. You're um, dying in prison. Yeah. So, so it's either snitch or don't die in prison. I mean, what if, what if, what know, if that's, that's tough, man. What if they came up with like, a, what if they talked behind the scenes, his dad and his son somehow, and they came up with a plan to do this? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That could you, be a, you, it could be a possibility. I don't too, know, man. But this obviously news was crazy. Fifty even responded to it. He even said it was like, "How old were the the? Did it say the age of these? They're young. They're like early twenties. Early twenties. Damn, man, that's crazy." But Fifty posted the news and said, "Damn it, man, I seen it all now. You can't trust nobody." And then Young and Ace responded, that's "Yeah, it's responded to be like free case." So, so. Yeah, he said, people say anything to get out of their own situation. This is Young and Ace responding to the situation. He posted 50s post, and they said, case so innocent. So, Jeez. yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, that's tough. No, if you actually kill somebody, obviously, keep that guy locked up for the rest of yeah, life. That's no, your fault, man. 100%. Yeah, man. I don't, like I said, I don't sympathize with rappers. If you did fucked up shit, I could give a shit less about how good your music is. Facts. Bye, gone, good riddance. I don't care. You're I murdering won't people. I not even listen to music anymore. Yeah, you're murdering people. You're causing harm for no reason. I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't give a shit. So that's that's what that situation is. Hell yeah. Um, speaking of snitching, Fat Joe stopped by, uh, what's this show? Matt Hoffa's uh, show. And he basically talked, you know when Fat Joe interviewed 6 9 before he got locked up? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and he warned him about, man, be careful what you're doing. Yeah. You yeah. know? He sure did. Fat Joe in this interview reveals that behind the scenes, after the interview was done, the cameras were done, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. 6 9 told him, hey, I'm not really a gangster, man. You know, And he, he said this in front of Shoddy, all these people from Treyway, in mm-hmm. front of them. He told Fat Joe, I'm not really a gangster, just the image. For sure. That's what he said, um, which is crazy because 
you know, at that time, you would think shoddy. If, if he actually said that shoddy or anyone from Treyway would be like, okay, this guy's a phony. Why do we have him around Treyway? Why do we have him doing gangster shit if he's not really a gangster? Yeah. You know, then you would be able to kick him out of the group. and Or they're all phony. I don't know. You didn't know. Shoddy and them actually did I stuff. mean, if they, if they allow this guy to just be around. Yeah. Obviously, they were using him too, man. That too, yeah. So let me, let me, let me um play this clip because it's interesting. But hey, it's acting, I guess. But do the time because they. So. This show gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Did you feel I go. After warning, Takashi, because I saw it when you sat with him, yeah. and I was like, Joe is trying to put him on right now, and I'm gonna just be honest it. with you. Damn. You went there? Yeah, I went there. This nigga's a sucker. Mm. Oh. He's a pussy, a sucker, a bitch. So let me get, yo, I'm okay. pop another bottle of right. <laughs> no, I ain't drink. Play. I'm dead sober. Yeah. 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 Talk that talk, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm dead sober. This dude here, this type of shit this nigga doing, I'm convinced he want to die. I don't yeah. wish it on him or nothing like that, but I'm convinced he's miserable. In his body, got he him. can't look in the mirror. Nah, I don't know if he got to be. He's he a lot of niggas think. He just Joe, got knocked out. Nah, nah, nah. hey, Joe, I'm not even nah, that. I'm not saying be. not everybody. Some niggas snitch for a living. Mm, yeah. Some niggas snitch on their mother. He yeah, got it. Joe. Hold up. Yeah. I'm not saying that. In his like, heart. I'm t- you're not listening to me. I'm listening. Some niggas snitch on their mother. And still being rap lyrics. No, n- I don't care about lyrics. Niggas snitch on their mother. Yeah. Do you get mother. me? Mother. Some niggas snitch on their mother. On they but yo, what well, you got? I ain't got nobody but my brother. <laughs> and they bring their brother in. <laughs> Cause once a son. <laughs> right, that's it. Well, it's real. I'm not lying. This is a fact. I know. I know. So it's 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 fact. Yeah. Right. So now the man snitch. Right. Cool. Do you whatever? How I did just you know that? I don't like the taunting. I, I try to tell him yeah. like what happens. Like yo, bro, listen. I didn't know if he really did it. I didn't know what was going on. The crazy shit is when I talked to him in that interview, I talked to him off the air, and he lied to me and told me, yo, this is just an image. I'm fronting this and this and that. <laughs> he told me that in front of Shoddy and them niggas. They were standing right there with him. He said, nah, what? Joe, he this told is just me that he image. was lying. That He's an image. Yo, Joe, I'm not really doing this. I'm not a gangster. You know, this is all for, like, promotion. I got it. At that point, I said, so you're not doing nothing because you're going to go to jail yeah. if you're really doing stuff. Right. Nah, Joe, I don't do nothing. I'm good. So I'm like, all right. Cool. He's with them. He's standing right next to these niggas. Right. They brought him. <laughs> do you not understand? They brought him. Yo, the OG called for you, man. Go do the interview and chilled with him. So I told him, boom. Next thing you know, they get caught. Now I know. Yeah. So, you know, we can go over through the whole interview, but yeah. Basically, 6 9 before he even got caught up in the situation, was like, hey, I'm not really a gangster, blah, 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 in front of Shoddy and them, and they just kind of brushed it off, and then they get caught up in that whole situation. And I wonder if somebody got, like, a video of him saying that, and they used it in court that we don't know about. Too. That's possible, yeah. Yeah. That's possible. Uh, 6 9 responded to it. Yeah, because he's denying it. Yeah. Yeah, 6 9 responded to it. This is what 6 9 said. Fat Joe is jealous of 6 9 6 9 has done more in his young career than Fat Joe has ever done in his long career. Fat Joe said I was miserable and wants to die. Fat Joe is miserable and wants to die because Fat Joe doesn't have half of what 6 9 has in money and cards. Fat Joe said I'm not a gangster. It was all for promotion. That's fake news. What's his proof that I ever said that? There is no proof. He's lying. Hmm. So, Yeah. I think Fat Joe, you see what Fat Joe said? That it relates to the story of uh, his father, Queso. Mm-hmm. Father turning on him. He said people yeah. were snitch on their own mother. <laughs> yeah, man, it's fucked up. So, <laughs> I mean, everybody is for their own selves when they get locked up. That's really At what it is, At the end man. of the day. Yeah. That's the truth. Self-preservation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's crazy, though. Um, speaking of Fat Joe, he actually, uh, he, he rapped 50 Cent's Window Shopper. Yeah. Is let me play this video. He sings 50 Cent's Window Shopper. We post about it on Diverse Mentality, and Fat Joe reacts to it. So let's first play That's the clip. Natina, you a window shopper! Big boy 
boy shit, nigga. Big boy shit, rest in peace, so Montana. Big boy shit, nigga. Trevor Squaw. Trevor Squaw, nigga. He was tipsy as fuck. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Yeah, that boy was tipsy. That boy was tipsy. He ended up liking our post. Uh, because what we said in the caption is, if you guys don't know this, originally Windows Shopper was a diss track towards Fat Joe, Ja Rule, Jadakiss, and Nas. Because if you listen to the original version, go on YouTube, type in 50 Cent Window Shopper original version, you go and listen to the hook. What does he say? Jada use a window. He first starts out with Ja. Ja use a window shopper. Mad at me. Think I know why. He says, uh, Jada use a window shopper. And then Joe. Then he says, Nas on the hook. Bad Joe responded. He's about to sneeze. <laughs> well, it wants to come out, but it's Bad not. Joe responded to this because in the comments, people were saying yesterday's beef is not today's beef. <laughs> so when Fat Joe took that from the comments, and said the exact same thing with a laughing emoji. And in our actual comment section of our post. Yeah. So shout out to Fat Joe for responding yeah, to it to and liking it. Um, hopefully we can get him on the podcast one day. That would be great. Yeah, man. I would love to. Yeah. That so he said amazing. yesterday's beef is not today's beef. He ain't lying. Exactly. He's so telling facts. You know what I like? I like that I laugh. Ha, 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 ha. So uh, shout out to Fat Joe, man. Great clip. Yeah. I'm glad they ended their, their, their issues because... 50 and, 50 and Fat Joe. We need more I, shit like that. We need that. more music because they only got one record together. Free again with DJ Case, like rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Um, we need more tracks from them or something together because they're dope. But yeah, if you guys didn't know, the original version of Windows Shopper is an actual diss track towards them. Why did 50 change it? I have no idea. That's a question I would ask him if he was on the podcast, 1 million percent. But do you think changing it was a good idea? Like I told you, man, I, I think it was. And I had to do something with, they probably realized how good of a record it was. And I just feel like if if they would have put it out as this, I don't think it would have been as big. That's just my opinion, but I I don't think I think I think Fifty proved that he can make hit records while dissing people still. So true, but it, it didn't change I, the I song that much. Like if the whole verse, right. if the whole verse got changed, I mm-hmm. think it would have it would have changed things. But you you you're changing one word. It goes from the N word to yeah. Nas. But didn't, didn't you say he he mentioned Joe Ja? Yeah, but. Doesn't matter. Fifty you know. Cent fans are Fifty Cent fans, regardless of. And then why? Why you mentioned those DJs are not gonna play it? They're gonna play it less, co- according maybe, to all the artists. Maybe you know. So, which it would only been like fan base of Fifty Cent that would have made it like this is a hot record. But you know, since he changed it to not being a diss, you know, I, I feel like it just blew up. You know, better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Yeah. But I could be wrong. But I think 50's proved that that, that he can make hits without this. I mean, oh, facts. With, with, yeah. with even dissing people. So, but um, that record is a beautiful. Record. I like the original version better. It just sounds more gritty. <laughs> he just yeah, dissing yeah. people. It fits. It fits the theme Sorry, of the Joe. song. Yeah, it fits the theme of the song better. It's like Wangsta. See how Wangsta blew up? Mm-hmm. Even though he didn't say. You're right. He didn't say Ja Rule's name in there, but everybody knew it was about it was right. about Ja Rule. So that's why it blew the fuck up. It was just, you a wankster, you never pop nothing. Like, yeah. So it was about Ja Rule, you know, but so I don't know. Yeah. Wankster might be one of the best diss tracks or one of the biggest diss tracks of all time. Technically, I think people forget that's a diss track. Yeah, it is. A, literally, in the beginning, that, the, that doll looks like Ja Rule and yeah. it's a wankster. Like, it just, but a lot clear. of people don't know that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, wankster is probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest diss tracks of all time. We got to do a list of the top 10. Dish tracks. Oh, I'm down to do that. I think we've done it before. I, don't I think know actually we've done. we've done it before. I have we done it before? I don't remember. I don't. Yeah. If we have, I think we did the biggest. I think the most popular. I think we did our own like what we like. Yeah. I think we did what we like, but the most popular ones we got to look into. But let us know in the comments. Uh, Eminem. So, as when you guys hear this episode, it will be the 20 year anniversary of Eminem's Eminem Show album. 20 years ago, this album came out. May 26th. 2002 was when it came out. 20 uh, years ago. If there was a kid born that day, he is 20 years old. That's how old this album is. That's crazy. Um, So, of course, the album is actually, I think, sold over 20-something million copies, that album alone. I think it's Eminem's best album, in my opinion. A lot of people like Marshmallow's LP a lot more. To me, I love Marshmallow's LP, but just the Eminem show, to me, it feels like it was more, more of a... A more thought out album 
and the production was at a different level, in mm. my opinion. I think it was a more cohesive album. I don't know. That's just you the said way. that perfectly. Yeah, it was just a more, you know, and a lot of it was a little bit more. You could say it was a little more mainstream, but just the way the production, the way Eminem flowed on, the way everything was just executed was yeah. right. Um, so I like it more than Marshmallows LP. A lot of people like Marshmallows LP as Eminem's best album. I get it, but uh, you got Without Me, White America, Sing for the Moment, Superman, Clean Out My Closet, all these records. So Eminem announces um, the 20-year anniversary expanded edition. Oh, shit. Which has dropped officially as of the reco- as of by the time you listen to this. It is officially out. Me, when I heard expanded edition... Immediately, this is what came to my mind. I think we this is what these artists should be doing. This is what they should be doing, but they're not doing. So, what do we know about Get Ready to Die Trying? When Dr. Dre and Eminem and 50 went in the studio, they recorded eight tracks. Only four of them made it on the album. That leaves another four that were never released, never heard of. When there's a 20-year anniversary, you know what would be dope? And I don't know why these artists don't do this. I know. Do an expanded version with like four tracks that were recorded around that era. Yeah. And just add it on. God, that is a genius idea. Exactly. That would boost the shit out of the sales of the album again. I would be so excited. And everybody would go back and listen. Even if it's not that good of a record, people would appreciate the fact that That, a song from that time came out. I don't think it would ruin the album's legacy either. No, I don't we, think we, we got to put that out there. That needs to happen. Hopefully, like get rich the twenty year anniversary. Imagine when we heard those four tracks yeah. that never came out. You know how how fire. I that bet would be? they're fire tracks. They are, dude. That time, at that time, Eminem and Fifty weren't missing. Yeah. Everything was fire. Yeah, that's fact. literally Eminem could fart on a track and everybody would and I would fart with him. Exactly, yeah. we'd all love it. So that's what I'm saying. At that time, you can't miss. It doesn't matter what the fuck he, he was rapping about. So God, that's crazy. Yeah, when I that's when I saw expanded idea. edition, I don't know why. They Wait didn't... a minute. So is that what happened on this? No, no. He just uh, he just it's gonna be like some NFT or some shoes or some exclusive T-shirt, some stupid. Which I don't. It's all right, I guess. I did get. you just think of this idea or? Yeah, I've never heard yeah. anybody say it. I, yeah. When I just saw expanded edition, I was like, why don't they do that? Why don't they add? Why don't they add? Actually, yeah, that's... It, you know what kind of gave me the idea was Michael Jackson's Thriller when they're doing the 40 year anniversary. They don't. Mm-hmm. Why don't they add the expanded version of his songs on there? This is a the best selling album of all time. And Michael Jackson's estate, what they do is they don't give a fuck. They just stamp a 40 year anniversary logo on the album and repackage it and sell it. And there's nothing extra on it. Nothing new. Nothing. It's the same shit. You got a 40 year anniversary of an album, the best selling album of all time. Why don't you add exclusive things from that yeah. time? Try to add something that's like... I wonder if anybody's thought of this idea, but the label's like, no, we can't be with some bullshit. Maybe they don't have the song. Maybe they lost them. That's another thing, too. Yeah, that's a long time, man. 20 years of having... Yeah, it's but possible, but it's not. Somebody's got them, man. Yeah. They're somewhere. Somebody's got to have yeah. If you don't have them, then you can't do it. If you have them, then do it. Yeah, exactly. Simple as that. So That's a genius idea. I would freaking love that. Oh I'm going to go on a campaign for Give Richard. I try and have that. Like Please. I said, I'm gonna watch yes. you guys. I'm not gonna reveal. Mentality. I'm not gonna reveal everything I'm planning on doing, but I, I'm gonna go on a full campaign trying to make this Man, shit happen. Please, uh, diverse so, mentality. Post it. Artists need to do this. Hopefully, somebody sees it. I'm for get rich. I need that to happen. Not yeah. just. I'm gonna, I'm gonna four f- tracks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go pay off DJ Hookay because he always steals records. So yeah, <laughs> Hookay. We gotta hit up Hookay. Yo, leak that shit. So I, I'm excited for this, but obviously it's just gonna be probably T-shirts, NFT, possibly. Who knows? I don't think it's going to be anything too special. Um, that's what I'm predicting because most of the album 20-year releases, they're all right. So, yeah. Uh, I just want to talk about this because anything Mike Tyson is crazy and Game and Mike Tyson are huge, both very, Game. very beefed up people. And um, Game hopped on the hot, hot boxing podcast with Mike Tyson. That's dope. So we'll see, see we'll see if he disses Eminem on there, finds something to promote his album. But I don't think he will because it's a... It's, uh, Mike Tyson's stuff, so I don't think he's gonna, you know, talk that shit. Yeah, so they do an arm, I think he probably will. arm wrestling match in the game, game one, basically. Because if you look at Mike Tyson, he's like leaning his whole body to try to turn. Yeah, uh, you know, but Mike Tyson's old, you know, it, it's a lot older than the game, so play the strong court. dude. He's smoking weed while he's trying to harm us. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he almost got him, man, for his, you know, I don't know how much. I think Mike Tyson's at least 15 years older than him. Somewhere 10 to 15 years, probably more. Yeah, it's 15. Let me see how 20, much. Yeah, shit. Let me see how much Mike. Is. You check game. How yeah. old is he is? I'll check Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's 55. 
Game's probably 40-something. Game is 42. So, yeah, he's about 13 years old. Yeah. So, I, I, I said 15, so I was a little off. But, yeah, damn near the same thing. So, okay. to struggle a little bit against Mike, Mike Tyson at that age, just shows Mike Tyson is, is still that guy. You're not that guy, pal. <laughs> that, video yeah. is, that video is hilarious. You're not that guy, pal. I uh, love viral moments like that. Uh, versus, let's talk about this quick. I just wanted to kind of promote it out there. Versus has been getting a lot of backlash, honestly, because of the, you know, now they're forcing people to pay or all kinds of stuff like that. They're putting a bunch of ads in these verses. So they suck the soul out of this series. But UGK versus 8-Ball and MJG. They're going against each other on versus. Literally, as this podcast comes out, it's 8 p.m. Eastern. So check it out. Just a quick promotion on that. I'm nice. not getting paid by them. I'm just saying if you guys are hip-hop fans, go ahead and check it out. Billboard Hot 100. Yes. Now we get to see where all the Kendrick Lamar songs land at. Nice. Uh, Jack Harlow is still number one. So nice. Kendrick Lamar did not knock him off the number one spot. First class, still number one. Uh, as it was, Harry Styles, still number two. And then you got to take off the Wi-Fi. Take off the Wi-Fi. Yeah, uh, number three debut in 95. Debut at number three. Uh, Future Wait for You at number four. Die Hard, which is, I think, the next big hit from Kendrick Lamar. They're actually, they're going with the single with Kodak Black as a single. They're going with that song as a single, the next single, which I disagree with. But What you mean, Kodak? The song with Kodak Black that he has. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, They're yeah. choosing it as a single okay. of the album, so they're going to shoot a video to it, all that stuff. Uh, so you got song. Die Hard at number, it's not the best. I think they should have gone yeah. with uh, the other ones, but Die Hard, like Die Hard is a good one. Uh, number nice. five debut, Morgan Wallen, You Proof, number six debut. Silent Hill, this is the one with Kodak Black that they're, that they're choosing as a single. I like Kodak's verse. Yeah, number seven debut, uh, United in Grief, Kendrick Lamar, number eight debut. So he's got one, two, three, four tracks at the top ten. Uh, About Damn Time, Lizzo, number nine, and then Big Energy Lotto, number ten. Then you got Kendrick Lamar, number 11 debut, Father Time with Sampha. Then you got number 13 debut, Kendrick Lamar, Rich Spear, which I think this is the best track off the album, or the more I listen to it. Uh, we Cry Together, that arguing track with Taylor Page, number 16 debut. There's a music video for that coming out too. Uh, number 19, Worldwide Steppers debut, Kendrick Lamar. Number 20, Count Me Out, Kendrick Lamar. So how many tracks is that? One, two. It's got 18 total. No, I'm talking about like on the charts right now. Yep. No, not the whole thing. I was going oh, to 20. Shoot. Yeah, you just, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tracks so far in the top 20. So nine tracks in That's the top 20. That's very four. good. Uh, now going in the top 30, you got Purple Hearts at number 22. You got number 23, Debut Savior as well. So you got Post Malone Cooped Up, which debuted at number 29 with Roddy Rich. That's pretty decent. Super Gun was at number 23. I mean, 32. Puffin' on Zooty's Future, number 31. You got the Rich Interlude, debut number 33. You got Mr. Morale, debut at number 40. Crown, debut at number 41. Auntie's Diaries, debut at number 47. Savior Interlude, debut at number 51. Mirror, debut at number 55. Mother I Sober, debut at number 59. Going on. A lot of the future tracks fell off, too. The Heart Part 5, yeah, went down from 15 to number 77. For Kendrick. And then that's it for Kendrick, I guess. So what would you say? How many tracks on there? 17, two, 18. Three, four, five, yeah, five, six. 18. That's the whole album, I think, right? Was it 18? Yeah, it was. That's the whole album. Nice. The whole album was They got the Wi-Fi. So Still the lowest. The with the Wi-Fi. Yeah, the lowest charting song is Mother I Sober. Which I'm surprised which because that song was actually talking about, you know, um, the whole abuse that he's dealt with and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but so that wouldn't be commercial to him. So. I mean, he was, I think, yeah, I'm surprised that We Cry Together record is so high up. I don't know why people like that. Show. It's an arguing song. I get I get the concept. I know I understand why people are intrigued with it, but mm. it's a song about, like, literally them arguing back and forth. Yeah, it was a little catch. I don't know. Take off the Wi-Fi. Feels like I'm, I'm in the room listening to two people argue. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's it for this episode of the Woo! Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 144. 44. Thank you so much for the support. Like I said, if the Always. PS5 does not pan out for those two people, we yeah. will redo the giveaway. We'll set up a date again, and we'll give them away a different uh, 
the people that already won the cash prizes, I'm sorry, you will not be entered in again. I want to make that clear. Uh, I know people are like, hey, you know, I won, but I want to be entered in again. You guys already won cash prizes. Congratulations. So you can't be entered in again because if you win the PlayStation 5 and a cash prize, you are the luckiest motherfucker on planet Earth. So I can't let that happen. Thanks. Not fair to other people. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep our eye on that. We'll keep you guys updated. And thank you so much for the support. Thank uh, you always. Spotify, sir. Deezer, Podcast, all that, YouTube. Have a nice, amazing night, day, whenever you listen to this. And peace. Peace.